May 1943, North Atlantic. Captain Eric Topp stares at his instruments in disbelief. For two years, his U-boat U-552 has been a ghost in these waters, invisible, untouchable, deadly. He sent over 30 Allied ships to the bottom of the ocean. But today, something is different. His detection equipment is picking up a signal unlike anything he's ever seen. A strange electronic pulse that shouldn't exist. Within hours, Allied aircraft will find him with pinpoint accuracy in the middle of the vast Atlantic Ocean. The hunters have become the hunted. And Captain Top is about to discover that no amount of courage, skill, or experience can save him from an enemy he cannot see, cannot fight, and cannot escape. This is the story of how one technological breakthrough turned the tide of World War II and transformed naval warfare forever. The Battle of the Atlantic was the longest continuous military campaign of World War II. For nearly six years, German U-boats prowled the ocean depths, strangling Britain's supply lines and threatening to starve an entire nation into submission. By early 1943, the U-boats were winning. In the first 20 days of March alone, they sank 97 Allied ships, over half a million tons of vital supplies sent to the ocean floor. Winston Churchill would later write that the U-boat peril was the only thing that ever truly frightened him during the entire war. But then in May 1943, something extraordinary happened. In just three weeks, the German Navy lost 43 U-boats. The following month, another 17 vanished beneath the waves. Entire wolf packs were being hunted down and destroyed with terrifying precision. Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, commander of the German submarine fleet, was forced to do the unthinkable. He withdrew his U-boats from the North Atlantic entirely. What happened? How did the Allies turn certain defeat into total victory in just a matter of weeks? The answer lies in a secret so closely guarded that even captured U-boat crews had no idea what had hit them. Let's rewind to understand just how good Captain Eric Topp really was. Topp wasn't just any U-boat commander. He was an ace, one of Germany's most successful submarine captains. His boat, U-552, bore the nickname Red Devil and displayed a menacing devil logo on its conning tower. Since 1940, Top had mastered the deadly art of submarine warfare. He knew every trick, every tactic, how to approach a convoy unseen, when to fire, when to dive, when to run silent and deep. His crew trusted him completely, they had to. At depths of 200 meters with depth charges exploding around them, trust wasn't optional, it was survival. The U-boat strategy was brutally effective. German submarines operated in wolf packs, coordinated groups that would locate Allied convoys, shadow them, and then attack in overwhelming numbers, usually at night. The Allies had defenses, of course, escort ships, aircraft patrols, depth charges, and radar, the technology that let I, them detect U-boats on the surface. But the Germans had adapted. They developed a device called METOX, a radar detector that could pick up Allied search radar signals from miles away. When METOX detected radar, U-boats would dive before the enemy could get close enough to see them. It was a technological arms race, and by early 1943, the Germans believed they were winning. Captain Topp certainly did. May 1943 U-552 is on routine patrol in the North Atlantic hunting for convoys. Top and his crew are confident. They've done this dozens of times. Metox gives them eyes in the dark, advance warning of any Allied radar searching for them. But then something strange happens. The radio man reports an unusual electronic pulse. It's not like the radar signals they're used to detecting. This is different. Shorter, sharper, operating on a wavelength their Metox system wasn't designed to pick up. Top doesn't understand it yet, but he feels uneasy. His instincts, honed by years of combat, are screaming that something is wrong. Hours later, U-552 spots a convoy, a tempting target. Top positions his boat for an attack approach. 
Suddenly, without warning, Allied aircraft appear overhead with impossible accuracy. Not searching, not patrolling. Heading straight for U-55 Fuse position, top orders an emergency dive. The submarine plunges beneath the waves, but the aircraft know exactly where they are. Depth charges rain down, exploding terrifyingly close. The boat shakes violently, lights flicker, men are thrown against bulkheads. But U-5 Artem 2s hull holds. They survive, top surfaces after nightfall, confused and shaken. How did those aircraft find them so quickly, so accurately? Night attacks like that shouldn't be possible. He tries again the next day. Same result. Aircraft appear as if they can see through the ocean itself. Three attempts. Three failures. Three narrow escapes. Something has changed. The ocean is no longer safe. Across the Atlantic, other U-boat commanders are reporting the same thing. Ships and aircraft are finding them with uncanny precision. The casualty reports are mounting. In just three weeks during May 1943, 43 U-boats are destroyed. That's one submarine lost for every four Allied ships sunk. A completely unsustainable exchange rate. What Captain Top didn't know, what the entire German High Command didn't know, was that the Allies had deployed a revolutionary new technology. It was called centimetric radar and it changed everything. Let me explain what made this so devastating. Traditional radar operated on wavelengths of about 1.5 meters. The German METOC system was designed to detect these signals giving U-boats advance warning to dive. But British scientists working in secret had developed radar that operated on a wavelength of just 10 centimeters. Hence the name centimetric radar. This shorter wavelength had multiple advantages. It was more accurate. It could detect smaller targets. It could be mounted on aircraft. But most importantly, the Germans had no way to detect it. The METOX warning systems were completely blind to this new radar wavelength. U-boats thought they were invisible when in reality they were lit up like beacons to Allied aircraft and escort ships. The technology wasn't just radar, though. The Allies had created an entire integrated system. They had high-frequency direction finding, called Huff Duff, that could pinpoint U-boat radio transmissions. They had broken the German naval codes so they could read U-boat communications. They had developed new depth charges that could explode at precise depths. They had very long-range aircraft that could patrol areas of the Atlantic that were previously beyond reach. And they had coordinated all of this information through advanced operations centers that could direct ships and aircraft to exactly where U-boats were operating. Captain Top and his fellow commanders weren't just facing better weapons, they were facing a completely integrated surveillance and attack system that could find them anywhere, anytime. The age of U-boat dominance was over. By late May 1943, Grand Admiral Donitz faced an impossible situation. His U-boats were being slaughtered. The loss rate had become catastrophic. Experienced crews, men who had survived years of combat, were not returning from patrol. On May 24, 1943, Donitz made the hardest decision of his military career. He ordered all U-boats to withdraw from the North Atlantic. It was an admission of defeat. The withdrawal didn't mean the end of U-boat operations entirely. Submarines would continue to operate in other areas and Germany would desperately try to develop new technologies to counter Allied advantages. They would create snorkel systems that allowed submarines to run diesel engines while submerged. They would design new U-boat types with better speed and endurance. They would develop acoustic torpedoes that homed in on propeller noise, but they never regained the initiative. The Battle of the Atlantic was effectively over. For Captain Top and U-552, the war continued, but it was different now. More defensive, more desperate. The hunters had become the hunted permanently. Top was reassigned to other duties in 1944. U-500 Mifir II continued operations until May 1945, surviving the entire war, one of the few U-boats to do so. 
but the strategic impact was clear. Without the ability to cut Britain's supply lines, Germany could not win the war. Allied troops, weapons, and supplies poured into Britain in preparation for D-Day. The invasion of Europe became possible only because the seas were safe. After the war, Eric Topp survived to see a new world. He lived until 2005, passing away at the age of 91. In his later years, Topp reflected on his experiences with remarkable honesty. He spoke about the critical importance of technology in modern warfare and how even the bravest, most skilled warriors are helpless against technological obsolescence. The story of U-552 and centimetric radar teaches us something profound about warfare and human conflict. Courage matters, skill matters, experience matters, but adaptation matters more. The German U-boat service was filled with brave men who fought with tremendous skill and determination but they were fighting a war that had fundamentally changed beneath them, and no amount of individual heroism could compensate for systemic technological inferiority. The Allies won the Battle of the Atlantic not through a single wonder weapon, but through the integration of multiple technologies and the coordination of information and resources on an unprecedented scale. Today we can see the same pattern playing out in modern military conflicts. Drones, satellites, cyber warfare, artificial intelligence. The nature of war continues to evolve. The lesson from Captain Top's experience remains relevant. In warfare, as in life, those who fail to adapt to changing realities do so at their peril. The invisible enemy is often the most dangerous one. If you found this story fascinating, Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more deep dives into the pivotal moments that changed history. What other untold stories from World War II would you like to see covered? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.